In this video, I'll walk you through my approach to interpreting your analysis results. Dipstick analysis and microscopic examination of the urine are indicated in the clinical evaluation of kidney function for both acute and chronic kidney disease. The dipstick is a plastic strip with chemical pads that change color when dipped into urine, indicating the presence of substances such as glucose, albumin, blood, specific gravity, leukocytes, ketones, and pH levels. The sample is best collected without contamination, which requires a clean catch, and examined within 30 to 60 minutes of voiding in order to minimize the breakdown of formed elements. Specific gravity measures hydration status and reflects the kidney's ability to concentrate urine. Normal specific gravity of urine is about 1.010. This can be used to estimate the urine osmolality. Here's a case of a 65-year-old female who presents to the clinic with a three-day history of dysuria, suprapubic pain, and foul-smelling urine. She denies fever or back pain. Her medical history is significant for recurrent UTIs. Your analysis reveals a urine pH of 8.5, positive leukocyte esterase, and numerous bacteria. A urine culture is pending. The patient is started on appropriate antibiotics for a UTI. Which of the following organisms is most likely responsible for this patient's recurrent infections? E. coli, Proteus, Klebsiella, Staph, or Enterococcus? If you answered B, Proteus, then you are correct. Proteus mirabilis is a common cause of UTI, particularly in patients with recurrent infections. It is known for its ability to produce urease, an enzyme that breaks down urea into ammonia, leading to an alkaline urine and formation of struvite stones. This patient's alkaline urine of pH 8.5 and a history of recurrent UTIs suggests an infection caused by a urease-producing organism like Proteus. The foul-smelling, cloudy urine and alkaline pH are characteristic features of this organism's infection. Urine pH ranges from 5 to 6. A low urine pH occurs in patients eating high-protein diets. A pH of more than 7 is an alkaline urine and can occur in patients who are strict vegetarians or patients with infections caused by urease-splitting organisms such as Proteus. Albumin is the predominant protein detected on the urine dipstick. It can be graded as trace, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, or plus 4. Sulfosalicylic acid test is used to detect the presence of other proteins that are not detected with the urine dipstick. Now, if there's a positive protein on a urine dipstick, the next best step is direct quantification of albuminuria and or proteinuria using a random or spot protein creatinine ratio or albumin creatinine ratio or a 24-hour urine collection. A high urine albumin level indicate glomerular injury. The absence of albuminuria excludes most glomerular diseases. Here's a 55-year-old man with a 10-year history of type 2 diabetes, presents to your clinic for a routine follow-up. His most recent A1C is 7.5%. Lab results show a serum creatinine of 1.1. A urine, random urine dipstick is negative for glucose and blood, but it shows plus one protein. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in assessing this patient's kidney function? Serum cystatin C, 24-hour urine protein, urinary sodium concentration, urine microalbumin to creatinine ratio, or renal ultrasound. The correct answer is D urine microalbumin to creatinine ratio. Albuminuria is an early marker of diabetic nephropathy and indicates kidney damage in patients with diabetes. Microalbuminuria, defined as albumin in the urine between 30 to 300 milligrams per day, is a sensitive indicator that precedes the development of overt proteinuria. Diabetic patients should be screened for microalbuminuria annually. This patient's trace protein on a urine dipstick suggests the need for a more sensitive test to detect albuminuria. 
such as the urine microalbumin to creatinine ratio. Again, early detection and treatment of albuminuria can slow the progression of diabetic nephropathy. Because of the challenges of 24-hour urine collections, the random or spot urine albumin creatinine ratio and protein creatinine ratio have been widely adopted. Proteinuria is defined as a spot urine protein creatinine ratio of at least 150. A spot urine albumin creatinine ratio of less than 30 is normal. 30 to 300 is moderately increased albuminuria and more than 300 is severely increased albuminuria. Here's a 55 year old female with type 2 diabetes presents to your clinic for a follow-up. A urine test reveals glucosuria despite no significant hyperglycemia. Which of the following medications is she most likely taking? Cytogliptin, semaglutide, clepicide, empagliflozin, or metformin? The correct answer is D, empagliflozin. SGLT2 inhibitors such as empagliflozin work by inhibiting the sodium glucose co-transporter 2 in the proximal renal tubules, leading to increased glucose excretion in the urine, and this is glucosuria, and helping to lower blood glucose levels. This effect is specific to SGLT2 inhibitors and can aid in glycemic control, particularly in patients with type 2 diabetes. Glucosuria refers to the presence of reducing sugars such as glucose, galactose, fructose in the urine. Glucosuria typically occurs when the plasma glucose is at least 180, or if the patient is taking SGLT2 inhibitor like empagliflozin since this medication prevents reabsorption of glucose. Ketonuria is associated with diabetic ketoacidosis, salicylate toxicity, isopropyl alcohol poisoning and starvation. It detects acetoacetate but not beta-hydroxybutyrate. Leukocyte esterase is an enzyme present in leukocytes. A positive test suggests pyuria, defined of at least five leukocytes per high power field. A 28-year-old female presents to the clinic with a two-day history of dysuria increased urinary frequency and lower abdominal discomfort. She has no fever, nausea, or back pain. Urinalysis shows a positive leukocyte esterase, positive nitrites, RBC 2 to 5 per high power field, WBC 10 to 15 per high power, power field. Which of the following is the most likely causative organism? Enterococcus, staph, E. coli, or strep? The correct answer is D, E. coli. E. coli is the most common cause of uncomplicated UTI, responsible for about 75 to 90% of cases. The presence of positive nitrites on urinalysis is a key clue that suggests infection with a gram-negative organism like E. coli because it reduces nitrates to nitrites. The other organisms listed do not typically produce nitrites. Thus, in a young sexually active woman with classic symptoms of a UTI and a positive nitrite test, E. coli is the most likely pathogen. A positive nitrite test signifies the presence of gram-negative bacteria capable of converting urine nitrates to nitrites such as E. coli, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Citrobacter, or Proteus. The nitrite test is negative in UTI caused by a non-converting organisms like enterococcus, staph, strep, or haemophilus. The presence of both leukocyte esterase and nitrites on urine dipstick is highly predictive of a UTI. Conversely, the absence of both has a high negative predictive value for a urinary tract infection. If the serum bilirubin is normal, there should be no bilirubin in the urine dipstick. In patients with severe liver disease or obstructive hepatobiliar disease, 
conjugated water-soluble bilirubin is excreted in the urine. Gut bacteria produce urobilinogen through metabolism of bilirubin. Urobilinogen is then absorbed via portal circulation and excreted in urine. Increased urobilinogen is associated with hemolytic anemia or parenchymal liver disease. Decreased levels are seen in severe cholestasis and obstructive disease. Urine dipstick detects both free hemoglobin and intact erythrocytes via measurement of peroxidase activity. Substances with peroxide activity can cause false positive reactions, and this includes myoglobin. Here's a 30-year-old man who presents to the ED with severe muscle pain and dark-colored urine after completing a marathon. He reports that the pain began the day after the race and has progressively worsened. Lab studies show a elevated serum CK of 20,000, elevated serum creatinine of 1.8, your analysis showed positive for blood, but negative for red blood cells on microscopy. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient's dark colored urine? Nephrolithiasis, bladder cancer, glomerulonephritis, rhabdomyolysis, or pyelonephritis? The correct answer is D, rhabdomyolysis. Rhabdomyolysis, often caused by strenuous exercise, results in the release of muscle breakdown products such as myoglobin into the bloodstream. Myoglobin is filtered by the kidneys and can cause T-colored urine to test positive for blood on urinalysis despite the absence of red blood cells on microscopy. This is a key finding distinguishing rhabdomyolysis from other causes of hematuria. The markedly elevated CK level further supports this diagnosis. A positive test in the absence of erythrocytes in the urine sediment may indicate myoglobinuria due to rhabdomyolysis or hemoglobinuria due to intravascular hemolysis following transfusion or shear stress related to mechanical heart valve or perivalvular leak. Microscopic assessment of urine sediment is indicated for patients with abnormalities on dipstick and in those with acute kidney injury, newly diagnosed CKD, or suspected glomerulonephritis. Did you know that erythrocyte morphology may suggest their origin? Well, for isomorphic erythrocytes, which are round and of consistent size, suggests more of a non-glomerular origin and as a result of likely infection, mass, cyst, or stone. In comparison, dysmorphic erythrocytes, which are fragmented erythrocytes with significant variability, suggest more of a glomerular bleeding. Acanthocytes is a form of dysmorphic erythrocytes characterized by vesicle-shaped protrusions are most suggestive of a glomerular source of bleeding. Dysmorphic erythrocytes should result in a prompt evaluation for glomerulonephritis. The presence of WBC in the urine of at least five leukocytes is called pyuria, which is most commonly caused by UTI. Here's a 45-year-old male patient presents to your clinic with a three-month history of dysuria, urinary frequency, and low back pain. He also reports intermittent low-grade fevers, night sweats, and a 5-kilogram weight loss over the same period. A urinalysis reveals positive leukocyte esterase, negative nitrites, WBC, elevated at 30 to 40 per high-power field, and RBC, 2 to 5. Bacteria were not seen, and the urine culture is negative. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient's symptoms? Chlamydia, enterococcus, E. coli, or mycobacterium tuberculosis? The correct answer is D. Steropyuria from mycobacterium tuberculosis. Steropyuria, especially in the context of systemic symptoms such as weight loss, night sweats, raise suspicion for genital urinary tuberculosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis can infect the kidneys and urinary tract, leading to pyuria without bacterial growth on routine culture. This patient's clinical presentation and negative urine culture 
point to mycobacterium tuberculosis as the likely cause of sterile pyuria. If there's presence of WBC in the urine, but the urine culture is negative, consider sterile pyuria. Two conditions related to sterile pyuria includes mycobacterium tuberculosis and acute interstitial nephritis. Here's a 30-year-old female presents with acute kidney injury. The urinalysis shows the following on the right-hand side. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Acute interstitial nephritis, pigment nephropathy, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, or acute tubular necrosis? The correct answer is D, acute tubular necrosis. Casts seen in the image are pigmented or granular muddy brown casts that contain tubular cell debris and may be present in acute tubular necrosis. The severity of acute kidney injury correlates with the number of casts and presence of renal tubular epithelial cells. A 45-year-old man presents to the emergency department with sudden onset of severe left flank pain radiating to the groin. A urinalysis is performed, which shows microscopic hematuria and numerous envelope-shaped crystals. Which of the following substances is most likely responsible for the crystal formation in this patient? Uric acid, cysteine, calcium oxalate, or magnesium ammonium phosphate? The correct answer is C, calcium oxalate, which are envelope-shaped crystals. A 50-year-old man presents with severe joint pain in his right big toe that started suddenly last night. Lab analysis of his urine reveals diamond-shaped crystals. Which of the following conditions is most likely associated with the finding of diamond-shaped crystals in this patient? Nephrolithiasis, gout, hyperparathyroidism, or pyelonephritis? The correct answer is B, gout. Diamond-shaped rhomboid form is one of the characteristic appearances of uric acid crystals, which only form in urine samples with a pH of less than 5.5 and are typically seen in patients with gout or in healthy individuals on a high purine diet. Here's a 35-year-old female presents to your clinic with complaints of flank pain, dysuria, intermittent fever for the past week. A urinalysis shows pyuria, urine pH 8.5, and a clear coffin lid crystals. Which of the following organisms is most likely responsible for this patient's condition? E. coli, enterococcus, staph, or proteus? The correct answer is D, proteus. Struvite crystals are clear rectangular prism crystals or coffee lid crystals. Struvite crystals are only seen in UTI caused by urease producing organisms like Proteus or Klebsiella. This ends my talk on how I interpret your analysis results.